Hi, I'm Julie. Welcome back. Welcome if you're new. This video, I'm going to show you two clips, and it's going to be from multi-level marketing coach Ray Higdon, and he's he runs the group Rank Makers on Facebook. I'm one of the whistleblowers from this group, and I've been creating a lot of content since I got out and speaking out. I'm going to be I'm going to just show you two clips here about how we are coached within the multi-level marketing industry to feed on your emotional vulnerability. It's pretty ruthless. So prepare yourself for this. Both videos are taken from something that he calls free coaching Friday. This is something where he goes live every Friday on his Facebook page. I believe he simultaneously streams to YouTube as well. And you can, people can ask questions and he will select a certain question to answer. And, and he'll give you advice. And so it's just out there for the public to see. This is how one of the, this is how I got roped into rank makers in 2017. I saw one of his free coaching Fridays and I thought it was excellent advice. Little did I know what I was getting myself into. So this is this first clip I'm going to show you here. And I'm going to pause it and comment, um, what he's, what he's talking about here as we go along. All right, hang on, <laughs> strap in and hold on to your hats. You connect with them, you communicate to them and you say, Hey, I understand that you're, you know, you're overcoming some trauma. I, that's totally cool. Hey, so you're connecting with someone. Hey, I understand that you're overcoming some trauma. <laughs> you can't make this up. This is what he teaches. He's doing this publicly. This is streaming live and he is coaching thousands of people within multi-level marketing that this is okay behavior. Hey, I understand that you're overcoming some trauma, but let's see what else he advises you to say to just your average ordinary person that you're going to see if they're open to taking a look at your product business or opportunity for your multi-level marketing company with. Cool, man. Um, listen, you may or may not know what I do on the side, but you know, I actually, I, I, I work with a travel company. I don't know if you ever travel or not. Um, Can you imagine having this conversation? If you do have one of these conversations with people, you're going to know it's a rank maker. <laughs> hey, I understand you're overcoming some trauma, but I don't know if you know this, but I actually work with a travel company on the side. I don't know if you want to travel. <laughs> this is the root of this behavior is from coaches, these multi-level marketing coaches. It's you, you can't make this stuff up. But a lot of us who've been through some stuff, we love to travel kind of reduces some of our stress. And, you know, if you'd like to. A lot of us who have been through a lot of stuff, a lot of us who have been through trauma really like to travel and reduce our stress. This is clearly exploiting someone's trauma. It's the casual and offhanded way with which the conversation is opened for me. You know, hey, I know you're going through some trauma, but I don't know if you know this, but, or if you travel, but I have this side business. To learn more about it, I'm happy to share it with you, but either way, I'm here to, you know, help you out. How can I help you? See, it's how can I help you is it's all, uh, this is another example of how, when you hear people within multi-level or outside of multi-level marketing say that all relationships are transactional. The point of this conversation isn't to connect with someone, to listen to them if they trust you enough to share their trauma with you, which they shouldn't be doing anyway, especially if you're in multi-level marketing, they should be sharing this with a trusted friend or family member or a therapist, a mental health professional. This sole purpose of this conversation is to potentially sell them or recruit them into your multi-level marketing company. This is exploitive, it's manipulative, and it's using someone's trauma in order to attempt to manipulate them to sell them something. And it is unethical. And this is standard fare with Ray's coaching and throughout the multi-level marketing coaching industry. It's a little bit more authentic. Right? <laughs> it's a little bit more authentic. He said it, not me. So your marketing doesn't have to be about the thing you sell. And that's the, that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they have, they have this calling on their heart to solve someone, but they mix it in with, yeah, but I sell batteries. Well, I really, I really want to help, uh, you know, 
uh, people that are in a narcissistic relationship, but I really got to sell this, this lipstick. <laughs> and I really want to help people that are in this narcissistic relationship, but I also want to sell this lipstick. If this is your first introduction to Ray Higdon, welcome. <laughs> it only gets better from here. This is light. This is the light version. And this is this is standard fare for rank makers. I was in this group for five years. I learned um, how to emotionally manipulate people through my marketing and having conversations. And he, waking up and healing from this is hard. You have to reconcile what you've been part of. Talking about narcissistic relationships now, the irony. Instead, just go, just go all in on helping the person and solve, helping them educate them on, on how they can get better if they're in a narcissistic relationship. And they'll want to connect with you. They'll want to know more about you. And then. When you're in a multi-level marketing company, say it's a company that has lipstick in this example, go all in and help someone that might have commented on a story that you've posted about narcissistic relationships, go all in and help them through whatever they're going through in order to then pop the question. Create a false relationship with someone in order to then attempt to recruit them into your multi-level marketing company. You're going to be creating this fake bond. You're creating this fake bond of trust especially when you're dealing with somebody in such an, a vulnerable and emotional state, someone recovering from a narcissistic relationship, narcissistic abuse. What do you think about this? And, you know, every once in a while you could, you know, do a video and say, uh, Hey guys, as you know, I'm typically on here talking about narcissistic relationships and I'm here to help you. But listen, you know, some of you have asked me, what is it that I do? Right. Well, actually, I'm part of this lipstick company and I love it. And I think it's awesome. And, you know, if you buy lipstick, then I'm happy to share with you what, you know, what. I know this is shocking. If you're watching this and you're thinking, how in the world is this being taught? And so many and thousands of people believe that this is good. Um, something to keep in mind is that when you're in the multi-level marketing industry, you're already indoctrinated. You pretty much already believe that it's a legitimate business model. The next step can be because we're taught and we believe we have this psychological blind spot that the only way to success in multi-level marketing is just work, working on our mindset, consistently showing up. You don't know when your big break is going to happen. We don't see that the flawed, we don't see the flawed business model. We um, see anybody that says there's a 99% loss rate across the multi-level marketing industry. And there's less than 1% that earn any money because it doesn't, even those income disclosure statements take a snapshot in time. It's just from one year. It doesn't take into account the 50 to 80% churn rate every year. People cycling in and out of these multi-level marketing companies. We don't see that if, if we're um, presented with facts, statistics, logic, pointing, uh, even giving contradictions pointed out from multi-level marketing coaches like Ray, we consider it hate because these groups erode our critical thinking. This kind of training and coaching is considered really good. We see this as, oh, this is such a great idea. So you're going, that, this is why, this is another reason why you see this egregious behavior from multi-level marketing reps. People, uplines that can afford more expensive coaching pa packages, like from people like Ray, could pay upwards of $25,000 for a year, go to his house, attend a mastermind, um, different retreats. And then they, in turn, take this knowledge and they teach it to their downlines. So not only are you getting coaching from your multi-level marketing company, the material that they're putting out, but then you're getting additional coaching like this. And it depends on who your upline goes to. So this is an ex um, this is just like one of the explanations for the toxic behavior you see throughout the multi-level marketing industry and multi-level marketing distributors. We're taught that this is okay to do. You, you see me talk about narcissistic abuse, narcissistic relationships a lot of time, but you're wondering what I actually do. Surprise, I'm in a multi-level marketing company. I'm here to emotionally manipulate you. It's no surprise anymore. It's not a surprise anymore. 
because nobody does this except people in multi-level marketing to this degree. What I got, and if not, you know, tune in tomorrow and I'm going to go back to talking about narcissistic relationships. And I hope it's been helpful. Drop me a comment if I have been. See it's so, it's like, and the way with which he says this, he has never had to do this. He never built his businesses this way. Um, I believe he got, he had 11 or 12 multi-level marketing companies that he attempted to succeed in before he got in at pre-launch in one. <laughs> and this is the one that he became the top income earner in, apparently. So these are all what if scenarios. This coaching advice isn't practiced. It's just all, this is what I would do if it's not rooted in reality, the offhanded way, like the casual, like nature of like, well, just say this, this just sounds so reasonable to us. When you implement it in reality, it, it doesn't work. It puts people off even now more so than ever. See what I mean? So I don't have to, I don't have to mix in the thing that I'm selling into every piece of content. So for example, if you're talking about narcissistic abuse, you don't need to, you know, take your lipstick out and try to sell it <laughs> because that would just be ridiculous. What would make far more sense would be to go all in and emotionally manipulate people, prey on their vulnerabilities, and then talk about your lipstick. That's how you do it in the multi-level marketing industry. Because that's going to, it's going to skew my my how i'm trying to help somebody does that does that make sense <laughs> what does what do you think does that make sense does that make sense to you <laughs> let me know in the comments if that made sense to you <laughs> you don't want to skew it you don't want to be um inauthentic okay this next clip is this next clip is going to be a one-on-one -on -one coaching that he does and uh, with an individual that tunes in during a uh, free coaching Friday live. I'm going to blur the person's name and their face. And however, this is, it is public. It's on YouTube. Um, it's on Facebook. I believe it's on his Facebook page as well. The problem with about not speaking out I've had, like, when I've addressed that reality show that the Higdon Group put on the play to win, people would say, like, you know, you're driving views to this content. Here's the thing. By not speaking out, you're not protecting the victims. You're protecting the abuser. When you speak out, you shine a light on abusive practices, on problematic behavior, and how this abuse is being duplicated throughout the multi-level marketing industry. You're going to see this person take this advice as if it's really good, the same way I did. But this person is being fashioned into a manipulator and ultimately to emotionally abuse other people. I don't know if she is in a multi-level marketing company or not, but I do know that she's like selling some books or courses. And you're going to see Ray coach her how to emotionally, how to really effectively emotionally manipulate people. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Here we go. Round two. So, you know, I sell shampoo, so I got to become the shampoo guru, right? So they start doing TikToks of them in the shower and whatever else. And they, it's such a limited way of thinking. Yeah. Stop thinking about the thing you have for sale and instead think about the person that you know you can help and you can help the person you used to be. So if you've been through trauma, if you've been through a narcissistic relationship, if you've been through it's quite interesting how he keeps talking about trauma and narcissistic relationships now. So it started off like if you are, say you're, say you're with a company, like I was with a company, Monate, selling shampoo. Oddly enough, I also did some videos where I was in my shower, shower shampooing my hair because it was fun. And I thought I like to mess around on video. <laughs> I thought this was an interesting take. I thought I found this. I thought this is interesting. Instead of talking about the product that you have for sale, instead of um, going to a small business and they, they do actually sell lipstick or they sell candles, don't talk about this. Talk about narcissistic abuse and trauma. That's reasonable, isn't it? That's what everybody in business does. That's what legitimate small business owners do. They don't talk about their products. They talk about narcissistic abuse and trauma.
This is what we're taught in the multi-level marketing industry. Through abuse, or you've been through, you know, whatever, whatever you've been through, right? Health issues, then share. Here was this was my recovery. This is what I did. Here are some exercises. Here are some things to avoid. Here's whatever. When Creating an extremely powerful emotional connection with someone by helping them out like that, it does create this feeling of reciprocity. So he might not be spelling out that this feeling of reciprocity, you're going to be exploiting that, but that's exactly what we're taught to do. And that's exactly what happens. When they connect with you and they will use, you, you say, Hey, well, what, you know, tell me about your journey. You know, like what, what have you been trying? And, you know, based on what you said, I think you might like the book and they'll say, you have a book. Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. So Based on what you've said, I think you might like my shampoo. Tell me about, so it's just waiting. You're not listening to listen to someone. This isn't a true relationship. This isn't empathy. This isn't compassion. This isn't showing up authentically. All of this is staged. All of this is manipulation. Every conversation we have when we're in multi-level marketing is a potential lead to having a sales conversation. Like he's just spelled out. You're just waiting for them to finish. So then you can then say, based on what you said, I think you'd really like my book. He's held up this book and it's a terrible book. <laughs> it's the only book that I, I, I remember even when I was um, in Rank Makers and I was in the multi-level marketing industry, I couldn't recommend it to people because even at the time, I it was so bad. It was so poorly written. <laughs> I could see through it then. Many other things I couldn't see through, but I could certainly see through that. So this is also a technique that he uses in order to shill his own products. Also, there's like two things going on at once. He's teaching um, his client or this person on this free coaching Friday to emotionally manipulate people, to feed on their vulnerability, to play mind games with them, to be dishonest, to be inauthentic. And then also he's plugging his own stuff. Also, for those of us watching, once you're in long enough, you realize you start seeing that there's a lesson embedded in the lesson. You're like, I could do that too. So I'm watching this. I could go on a Zoom call or do a training for my company, Mon8, and then say I'm selling an additional course of something. I could just casually hold it up as an example in the middle of my coaching. This would be like his version of a high profit mumble. That's what he would call a high profit mumble. Yeah, I got a book, you know, because you're not m so marketing that thing that you're trying to sell. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. So but see, it's difficult if I said, oh, yeah, you got to market each thing you got to sell. Then that becomes like, oh, my God, that's, you know, how many graphics do I create? How many right. how many programmers do I hire? And he makes it sound like it's so ridiculously foolish to market the products that a small business sells. It's and the way he, he does this, that's all strategic as well. So we when we see this, we'll think the people that like really like his coaching and a lot of people do. There's thousands of people that do. I was in for five years. We think, oh, this makes sense. Of course, it doesn't make sense to talk about what we're selling because ultimately in multi-level marketing, it the product is irrelevant. It's all about the business opportunity because it's all about recruitment because the only way that you can make any kind of real money in multi-level marketing. And for the vast majority of people, that's an impossibility. Statistics don't lie and they never change. Instead, keep it simple. You put the content out, you put the value out, you attract them, you communicate with them, you see what you, know, what you can help them with. So just keep... It's funny how he says that that's simple. That's really time consuming and overcomplicated. It would be much easier. Um, you're selling a candle and you're like, there's a special on these candles. It smells so good. I love them. My friend recommended it. It's much more harder to do this whole circuitous route of talking about narcissistic abuse and trauma and then hoping somebody reaches out to you because you've emotionally connected with them in some way and then go all in, create this fake relationship and just wait until they're finished speaking to then say, based on what you said, and it doesn't matter what they said, because this is just a script that we're taught from Ray. Based on what you've said, I think this lipstick, this shampoo, just might help you out. It's helped out a lot of people have been in narcissistic abusive relationships. They wash their hair, they feel good, they look good. <laughs>
This is dark stuff. Keep doing what I'm doing, but um, be more obvious about it now because um, I don't, I, I'm not at a place now that I'm used to making money <laughs> and our family. His shirt says default setting gratitude, by the way. You can buy this shirt. You could go to the Higdon Group merch shop and you could buy your own default setting gratitude shirt. <laughs> I used to own one. It was pink. <laughs> He's enjoying having money to do things that we, I mean, I have a niece who died. I mean, I've all, I, I, I told guys that, listen, we have got to up our income because we've got people that are older and we've got people to take care of and I've, I've got to have income. So I know that that's why he brought increase. I'm so thankful to be able to give and so thankful to be able to do things I've wanted to do for years from a place of surplus, you know, an abundance. We're supposed to give out of abundance anyway. You know, it's supposed mm -hmm. to all be abundant, you know. Sure. Totally. So keep branding me. I think one of the most disturbing things that I see now um, in multi-level marketing, which I didn't see when I was in, is using people's faiths and religion to justify the existence of the multi-level marketing industry and their participation in it and the abusive ways and exploitative ways that they go about attempting to sell and recruit people. Religion, your faith is not a justification for that kind of behavior, no matter which way you twist it. it can be used to justify anything and they do, they use it. They use it willy nilly. But be more, uh, be more obvious about it. Cause I've always been a little uh, shy regarding really doing it full force, like full on. I've just really been a little concerned about that. But uh, Because you sense that this is manipulative and you're preying on people and that it's wrong. It's unethical. That's why you've been not going full on in the way that Ray wants you to go full on. He's coaching you to be an abuser and you are going to continue the abuse. You're modeling this abusive behavior and your downline is going to emulate it. You have now become a predator. The manipulated becomes the manipulator. And if your faith is tangled up in this, you're gonna have a lot of healing and unpacking to do when you wake up from this. Um, I'll give it, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at your, uh, Facebook and, oh. and you do, um, I mean, you, you know, you're, you're putting some, some good value out there. Um, this is also multi-level marketing speak, putting good value out there. It, there's not a real definition for this. It means doing a lot, doing a lot of free things without expecting anything in return because that's operating out of abundance. So she probably has a lot of videos, Facebook live videos out there, um, offering help on whatever, lots of content, posting the right number of times a day, according to Ray. That's probably what he's talking about, but he hasn't looked or consumed any of her content. He's just looking at her Facebook page and says, oh, it looks like you've got given a lot of value. It's empty. This isn't actual coaching. This is just more of that empty word salad. I do. I'm a writer, so I'm I'm always. And, and by the way, if you're, I mean, very few people are blessed with being a good writer. So if you're a good writer, yeah. right away. Who, who says that? It's kind of an odd thing to say, you know. Where are your deep, where are your statistics on that? Very few people are blessed with being a good writer. I don't know. It's just one of the many things that you need to, when you start like waking up and critically thinking, it's like, where, where is this guy getting this information from? He's just making things up and it's done to like grease her wheels. This is like one of those compliments. So then she can be open to receiving his coaching now. It's all manipulation. This is, this is his blueprint. This is how he operates. All right. Most people aren't a good writer. So telling them to write is not a good idea. Okay. Um, but um, you're, you're a, you're a good writer. I think. He's not a good writer. <laughs> That's the problem. The only, the only, the, the only thing that I, I feel like you need to hear mm -hmm. is. Here we go. 
Uh, Here we go. This is it. So he had to compliment her in order then to bring her down. And it's probably because he can see that she is such an amazing writer. And his book that he held up, that vibrational money immersion, is such a bad example. There must be some kind of truth. It's like, I have to, I have to bring her down. <laughs> I haven't seen this particular clip. I only was going through the transcripts of his videos to see if I could find an example. And I stumbled across him talking about narcissistic abuse and narcissistic relationships. So that's why I chose this. Um, yeah. Um, no one's life's going to be changed by your Facebook status. Correct. You have to get them. That's not true. You can take in, you can, and he's actually said this. He recommends watching a video that um, will um, convert you to Christianity. And if you don't get converted to Christianity after watching this video that he recommends, there's something wrong with you. Your, your life can be changed from reading something. For example, my dad passed away. I posted on a Facebook status. It, affect, it changed people's lives, people that were really close to him. That's like an extreme example. But this guy uses extreme examples all the time. It can also be changed in a, in a cool way, like learning a recipe or a kitchen hack. I remember I watched a TikTok where this guy puts a garbage bag in a garbage can in just a different way. Like he has the garbage bag, but then he just kind of goes down like this with it. And then he, it's just like a big, long line and you and you just stick it in the garbage can and i've been doing that ever since it's like it changed my life define change your life that's the problem here change your life means you need to sell them something you need to get them into rank makers or 100k inner circle coaching or you need to get them to buy from you buy your course buy your book or buy your product service or recruit them into your multi-level marketing company that's the only way you can change someone's life. What is it about impacting and changing lives? Why can't you just be social on social media? Because every post that you do on social media and every conversation you have on social media and outside social media, it takes up your complete being. It is all transactional. The whole point of your whole being when you're in the multi-level marketing industry is to recruit and to sell. And this is how we're coached to do it. I'm connected to the next step. And that's where my, that's my strongest weakness. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I have think it big things. I have all those things. I have them in place. They're just sitting there because I, okay. I, 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 need the, I need the organization to say, okay, for the next four weeks, I'm going to do this course and yeah. Start or because I love to coach. I love live coaching. That's my thing. I mean, you get me in front of a thousand people or ten thousand people, I'm going to be just like this. You know, it's it's my hot. It's my love. I love to pour in. It just pulls out of me, and I haven't done it in a long time because all okay. I've been doing. Here, is here's here's an example. All right. So, because I because you don't you don't you just need all you have to do is you have to start looking for opportunity for connection which may be a so the language is really important here because he's not just he's describing what's happening but he's making it nicer about it you're just looking for emotional connection you're just looking for connection you're not emotionally manipulate manipulating people you're just looking for connection someone says they've been in a narcissistic relationship or experiencing narcissistic abuse or have been through trauma you're just looking for connection you like the color blue? I like the color blue. It's the same thing. It's just that easy. There's nothing wrong with that. Source of contention with you. So I, I being a workaholic was my coping mechanism because I, uh, deep down I hated myself and there was a piece of me that I didn't recognize that didn't want to connect with others because I'd been so hurt in the past. This is just him trying to manipulate people. He goes on these riffs where he, this is where he thinks he's being vulnerable and it, it can be quite um, compelling and oddly enough, charismatic when you're like under his spell, like when you're in rank makers and you're getting coaching from him, you think like, wow, he's just being so honest and open. Not many people just talk like this. Nobody talks like this. <laughs> that's, the, that's the reality because it's all manipulative. He's like, I hated myself. This is what I do. 
this is a memorized speech and it's like the dramatic pause for effect. This is again meant to disorient this person, this individual. This isn't teaching her anything. Again, the blueprint. Helpful. He doesn't understand what happened because nobody does, because his whole point of this isn't to actually help her. It's to get her to buy more coaching or courses from him. And hopefully anybody that her can, like her network, if she is in a multi-level marketing company, to bring them all in too. She's like, I don't understand what happened. Nobody does. <laughs> Welcome to Rank Makers. Let me give you an example. All you right. can read, you can read. I, I'll just tag you in a couple of things and you can just see how helpful. No, no, I already got you. I already got you. So <laughs> um, November 23rd at 1031 AM, you did a live and it says day nine, that person smiling. Am, am, am I right? This is you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I decided so to do the 12 days of dawn, but the 12 days of trauma and Thanksgiving up to my birthday. Yes, this year. So if you didn't catch that, she decided to do the 12 days of trauma. because that's a normal thing to do in multi-level marketing. I'm going to do a live video every day, the 12 days of trauma. How much grosser can this possibly get? You might be asking yourself this. So you, you have, you have golden opportunities already, but you're not looking for that connection. Okay. So if you start looking for that connection, you, you already got it because he's a predator. And you're learning from the best right here. You just have to look for the connection. What do so, I do? I won't say I won't say the full name because I don't I don't you know I I don't I don't want to say the full name. But uh, someone named Jennifer said, "I've been alone by choice and by default. I've also felt alone in the midst of people." She's one of my babies. She's so. He's looking for connection. It translates to, with Ray, that translates to I'm looking for the most vulnerable. Who can I target? Because this is what predators do. And this is what he's teaching her to do. She's immediately saying, this is, I mentor her. She's one of my babies, meaning like that kind of language, wanting to protect someone. Still not like addressing the person as they are. Both of them are wrong. In my opinion, it's a person. They're not a baby. They're not this connection. But this is how he teaches. You lock in. You look for the most vulnerable. This is how he makes his money. He goes after the most vulnerable. This is what the multi-level marketing coaching industry does. You thought the multi-level marketing industry was bad, going after the most vulnerable. Multi-level marketing coaches take it to a whole other level because they teach everybody in there to really refine this manipulation and predatory behavior. He's one of my babies. Okay. He's, so I've mentored her for years. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you just say, yeah. So I, I don't know the history here, but you say, yes, ma'am. That to me is a help me right yes, now. He can see that someone is like, I'm alone, even with people. And to me, that's a help me. And you know what his reaction and advice will be? How can I sell them something? Because that ultimately means I'm helping them. I have to save them. It might not be your business. It's not your business to be exploiting these relationships. This is really disturbing. I and mean, let me let me just pick another one since you have you know that relationship with her. But um, but you look for it right when you start looking for connection. So you start looking for connection. When people like, you know, right now, I'm very, very grateful that, you know, there are a lot of people writing me uh, messages or comments saying, hey, you know what? I, uh, you know, I've really oh, that, been that, unsure. He's going to try to sell something. This is what he does. He's, he's going to go on about what he wants to sell. It's another example of him. So I hope that gives you um, a better idea of what we experience when we're in, when we're getting multi-level marketing coaching and particularly from Ray. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.